look at that. I'm very, very happy with that. That is so cool. What a beast. Hello everybody, Mr. Stixman here and welcome back to Stormworks Career Mode. Today we're going to try and get a fully... Oh, that truck just moved. <laughs> Today our goal is to get a working version of this truck. I know the power unit I'm going to go for now is going to be diesel electric, at least for this version. And I also have an idea for a trailer which I'm going to make as well, which will enable us to transport containers. Um, but today we are focusing just on the truck itself and we want to get it moving. But first of all, I've got a plan because if we have a look at the front of this thing, it's quite narrow, isn't it? It's not very wide. It looks okay, but it's not quite wide enough, I think. So I'm going to make it wider, one block either side. And uh, yeah, it should look a lot better. So let me just do that and then we'll check it out. And boom, there we go. Here is a wider version of the same truck. There's nothing different. I mean, I think I've done it all correctly, but it's one block on either side wider. So two blocks wider in total. I've left a bit of a gap there, which I'll, I'll patch up another time. But there we go. That's much better, isn't it? Much better. I mean, it gives us more space in the cab, of course, um, and more space for tools and equipment on that back wall there. But it just really, I did it just because it looks a bit better. It still fits through these two barriers here, and it is possible to make stuff in this workbench which can't quite get through these properly. I've done that in the past, but this truck does get through. As long as you're fairly careful, <laughs> um, it should be fine. But now let's go into the workbench then. And I'm going to start building uh, some rear wheels here and some kind of platform at the back where we can hitch up a trailer to, you know, that kind of stuff, a few more details. I'm going to hook up the engines now as well, put some electric motors on and actually take it for a spin in this episode and see how it performs. Okay, here we are in the workbench and straight away I'm going to start thinking about the rear wheels for this thing. I'm going to have two wheels at the back on either side, so that'll be uh, six wheels in total. Um, and we're going to take the same wheel here. So the idea, I think, is if I just grab some blocks, maybe in pink, just to see uh, where we're going. Because our wheels are now lower down, so they're not quite where this bar is. We don't need this bar anymore. Um, so the wheel joins there. And that is the center right there. So we'll bring this back. And that is actually our wheel level. Right, okay. Now behind here, I'm just going to get rid of these blocks for a minute. That's the back of the cab, okay. So let's count maybe like seven blocks back. I'm just going to guess there. So if that's one, okay, we'll just put six more. Uh, there we go. That's seven blocks back. And then this is where we're going to have our wheels. But how wide are they? Let's just find out here. Uh, one, two, three away from the bar. So that's one, two, three. And then we can put our wheels on. So we'll grab two of those. And I will, you know, I'll make sure they're steering in the right direction later. But I'm just going to place them down any old hell for now. And just make sure, you know, they're well positioned at the moment. So where, I wonder where these are going to go. Is it here? That's a bit close actually, isn't it? There we are. That's better. That's better. So which one's that on? That one there. Fantastic, and already look how much better it looks. Just adding a few big details like that makes a massive difference to the overall appearance of this truck. Uh, but let's continue because we're far from done yet. So I'm going to get rid of these now. We know where the wheels are going. Um, I might even have rear wheel steering on this thing. Uh, yeah, we. I think that might be a good idea actually. I'm not quite sure how that works with a trailer. That might not be good with a trailer. I don't know. Um, but anyway, let's uh, let's just do one step at a time. That'll be one of the final things we do on this truck. So let's get rid of all this now. Don't actually need that. And we'll bring this back to about here. Because I guess I might want some kind of protective barrier just behind the wheels there. And we can have a number plate and, you know, just stuff like that on it. That's a bit close, actually, isn't it? Let's leave that for now. Okay, now there are probably a lot of blocks that we just don't need inside this thing as well. So we will, of course, do a lot of weight reduction as much as possible. And we need to make this thing a bit cheaper as well. Because I am planning on putting one of the large batteries in here, which is $10,000. Um, but I think that would be very, very handy for us. We have 45000 at the moment. Um, and as I say, we can save a bit by getting rid of this, for example. You know, every little bit helps, right? We even don't need this anymore. Uh, so we can get rid of that. And here is our fuel, right? So my idea for the fuel is actually to have the tanks visible just down here somewhere. And so to do that and to make it a bit better, what I might actually do is put wedges here so we have a bit more space. 
and then we can sort of see them here let's do that there we go very nice very nice now where are the tanks actually going to sit well where's the fuel line going to go let's run that along maybe if we delete these for example here because we don't need those at all okay there we are um, get rid of those now this is our fuel line so let's actually bring it down what are these things oh we don't need those either do we that's just part of the engine there leave that one on now we're going to have at least one large fuel tank on either side is what i'm planning at the moment so in fact if we just send this line back a bit the fuel line and then maybe bring it to the side like here so put a t-piece there there's our t-piece and actually i will color these things in orange now just so i remember what color the fuel line is um, it can be quite handy to do that. So yeah, we'll bring that along there. And then where are the tanks actually going to sit? Well, somewhere behind here, right? Um, so yeah, let's bring that a bit wider. And then we can try this. So let's just try it here. If we angle it to the back now. Uh, there we go. Bring it all the way back. And I might change these to pipe, like exposed pipes rather than enclosed ones. Or I might even change it to, you know, a fuel uh, hose, for example. Uh, I'm just going to do this for the start and, and we'll see what happens. Um, but that's pretty good, actually. Now, uh, I'm just thinking, right, let's try put a T-piece here. Just like that, okay. And let's grab a tank. So, you know, the best, if we're going to use these tanks, which I am planning on using one of these, um, we do want the large one, really. It's just the most space efficient way of getting, you know, quite a good amount of fuel in. And we're not going to be burning a ton of fuel, actually. It, we're only charging batteries here, so I'm hoping to be quite fuel efficient. But will it fit? No, it won't fit there. <laughs> so we may have to uh, change things around a bit. What about underneath? If I just put it here, right, and just flip it round. Actually, that works pretty well there, doesn't it? Yep, I'm actually quite uh, surprised and happy about that. Now, if we do have rear wheel steering on these wheels, or both of all of these uh, rear four wheels here, they might kind of collide with this tank a bit. So what we could do is shift it to the left one. Let's try that. If we uh, replace that, and also we'll get rid of those as well. And there we are, the tank is on. In fact, I do have to just change over the one on this side, but I, I think that's actually a good place for this for this tank. Let me know what you think, everybody. Um, it I think it looks a bit better if it's further back. However, of course, if we do have rear wheel steering, which we may or may not need, I reckon it would just be better to have it one block away from that wheel. So we'll go with that for now. And I think we do have enough ground clearance as well. It's something we can always change, isn't it? So let's just put it like that for now. And, uh, and see what happens but I will just lift up this one by one block to match it okay and that's done right let's just get rid of some of these things for now and uh, we'll see how we get on from there okay with that done I think we should spawn this whole truck in and just see if we can wheel it out of the shed before we carry on just in case there are problems with it so let's go with this here we go then, we've spawned it in for the first time with all of its wheels on. Oh, that looks so good now, doesn't it? I'm so glad I made it wider. And don't worry, we are going to have details in the front. We are going to have spotlights, of course, and maybe a horn or something, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. It looks a bit plain now, but it won't forever. But let's go right round to the back then. And uh, yeah, we'll just see if we can wheel this thing out. Look how big it is. It's pretty monstrous, isn't it, at the moment? Come on. Out you go. It is pretty straight. Yeah, look at that. Look at that. Just enough room on either side. We haven't touched either of the posts. That was really, really good. Let's carry on. Just make sure it goes the whole way without any problems. Oh, yes. Just about. That's fine. We're not going any wider with this thing. But look at that. I'm very, very happy with that. That is so cool. What a beast. Okay, next, I do want to think about adding our big battery now. I want to do that quite early on because it's such a big component. And, you know, if we just do it later, we may not find enough space or we'll have to move stuff around. So let's get that in right now. And then I think we're going to add some motors to the front two wheels at least. And, yeah, just try and take it for a spin, actually, before we even hook up the generators. Let's just see how much power it consumes. You know, if two electric motors are enough, like the small ones, for example... I'm not looking for speed, of course, but we do need power to get up hills, and especially when we're towing heavy weight. But let's just get rid of this, and, well, you know what? 
A lot of this stuff, look at that, it's just not needed. Some of this is the floor of the cab. But we could even use the battery here as part of the flooring, I think. That might work really well. So that might be... Yeah, that, that's probably a good enough space right there. So let's go and get a battery and just see... Look at that, it weighs 800 and it costs $10,000. But I think we need it, to be honest. It's going to be very useful for us. That's perfect. Is it too low? No, oh, it's, no, it's all right, isn't it? <laughs> it's kind of low, but it's actually not that bad, considering how big it is. And we do have space here, look, to hook up our engines. Oh, sorry about that. Hang on a minute. There we go, we've got space to hook up the engines for the power. Uh, that's two blocks of space, actually. Look at that. That's really, really good. I'm quite pleasantly surprised, actually. The flooring is now partly battery. Yeah, that uh, that is the battery right there. But we can just pretend it's flooring. And you can paint it if you want to, of course, like that. Uh, so, you know, <laughs> we'll, we'll do the painting another time. But there we go, that's... Uh, that's really good progress right there. You wouldn't know that's a battery from up here. Okay, now let's hook up some small electric motors then. And yeah, we'll, we'll just see, you know, how powerful they are, how long the battery lasts. I've got some dials. I can just quickly hook them up to the uh, the battery and stuff. And maybe some speed as well, just to see how things are. All right, so let's get going then. Um, here is where we want to put our electric motor so okay so i'm going to start off with a pipe um, angle piece right just you know i might actually link all of the wheels onto the same kind of uh drivetrain here if that's what it's called i don't know but just to start off with we'll put down a small electric motor onto one of these things for each front wheel right and we'll just see how that goes so now we'll get our motors it's all about testing really at this stage, isn't it? Before we know exactly what we can do. But there's our motors. Uh, so we have one for each of the front wheels. Now let's hook them into some power. Right, so going to logic then and electric. So here's the battery. Here are two motors. Now are the wheels pointing in the right direction? Well, that one's going to roll this way. That's good. Uh, this one is also going to roll in the right direction. This one is steering correctly because the positive is going right, which is, yeah, the D key. Uh, yeah, this one's wrong. So what we have to do is replace this wheel. Let's turn off symmetry mode. Right, so we'll just hook that up onto the right place. Now, what we want to do, if you're unfamiliar with this, is you want to use the sort of the U, I and O keys, I think. No, not, not the I key. Uh, <laughs> uh, okay, it's steering in the right direction now. But I'm just using U and O, basically. And I think that might be right, actually. Uh, it's rolling in the right way. Yes, that's correct. As far as I can see, that is actually correct. Yeah, it's a bit weird. I wish you could just do it in symmetry mode and it would work. But uh, anyway, I think we've got it <laughs> fixed up and working. So let's hook it in. Uh, first of all, we want to go to data. And we're going to get W and S for the motors here like that okay then we're going to go to a and d and plug them into the steering so there's one on the left and uh one on the right and of course we will do brakes and everything but i think just for now we'll just do it very simply uh like this and just before we spawn it in and test it i think i'm gonna have to actually because the doors are not working yet are they so let's just grab a big wide area here so we can climb in um spawn it in and it probably won't work <laughs> but we'll try it it should work we can, uh, yeah, oh good, we don't need a ladder to get up here. Here we go then. Steering's working, so good, left and right. There's no interaction between the wheels and the body work, so that's all brilliant. Okay, now let's try W. Oh, it's working! I'm ju I just tapped it. That's all I've done, I'm not holding it at the moment. Let's get through here. Oh, yeah, okay, just about. We'll have to make sure our trailer is not too wide, because, it, you know... It, Oh, look at that. Right, let's just go full power. We'll do it off-road. Oh, yeah, I didn't plug it into any dials yet, did I? Hang on a minute. This is, this is quick. Oh, my goodness. Look how quick it is with two small electric motors. That's incredible. <laughs> I'm amazed. I've got to test this out with the speed uh, sensor in a minute. Bit of off-roading. Are we damaged? No, no damage at all. Whoa, this is incredible. I mean, don't forget, we could add, like, double the electric motor power, um, or triple, even. And, of course, it is going to consume more power then, but look at this. So, the speed is, at the moment, no issue at all. 
it's about you know grip really next we can adjust the tires to get more grip um, you can see there's a bit of wheel spin here but going uphill with a big weight behind of course that is the real question but look at that on its own and we're not draining battery that quick i mean if i just go in a straight line here but we, we're still maintaining really good speed so the battery will weaken over time which will make the, the motors weaker as well but look at that that's not bad is it for such a simple setup and we're not even charging the batteries at this point <laughs> But yeah, the rear wheel steering, as you can see, is actually steering very, very well. But with rear wheel steering, it will help a lot uh, for grip and for how sharp we can steer too. Right, let's take it back into the, uh, into the workbench then and we'll have a go at uh, the next step. Damn it. Okay, and by the way, I am going to try and show some of my microcontroller work um, when we get round to it on this truck as well, because I know some of you guys have asked for that. Um, and although I'm no expert at microcontrollers and logic and everything, um, you know, I know just little bits here and there. So I'll show you my process for that and I'll try and explain it all. I'm not going to do anything super complicated, um, but yeah, it, hopefully that's interesting to some of you at least. Okay, now let's just hook up a speed sensor in here because I am very intrigued to see uh, how fast we're going. And next time we'll take it out, we'll do a little test on that as well. And then all we'll do is we'll connect it into one of our simple dials up here. Um, I may use instrument panels at some point, but let's do that into the center dial. And then we'll also have the battery connected to, let's see, like this one, for example, right? Um, now speed, let's have that zero. Um, we'll just label them for now. And if we just put down, I don't know, like 60 meters per second, we're probably not going to go anywhere near that speed. But there we go. Let's just try that. And then battery will keep it like zero and one. That's fine. Okay, so next I think what I'm going to do, and I will have the option to have electric motors on the rear wheels as well. Or we could actually just, you know, sort of route the power from here also back into the rear wheels using only two electric motors. I'm not sure if that's the best option yet, but I think what I might do is try to increase our ground clearance here slightly. Let's just have a go and see what happens. Okay, and that is done. So um, what I've done is I've got an angle piece here so we can potentially add more, oh, hang on, more electric motors onto these things if we want to like that. Um, or if we need to, we could actually route the power just from the front down the back along here. And then I can change this up a bit and have that same power going into the rear wheels. But that is six electric motors. Now, I'm not going to start off with that because although it's you know perfectly fantastic for what we need um, it might drain quite a bit of power and before I do that I'll probably want to see how much we can generate um, with the motors here with the engines um, and then you know we can add more motors if if we need to if it's okay so let's take off these motors for now and leave those pipes there uh, just ready in case Now, another reason for me raising this up is actually because we're going to have obviously a method of attaching trailers here and I don't want it to be that low to the ground. I mean, I think that might be a good height. For example, if we're going to use electrical connectors, I probably want something, you know, along this kind of height here, um, maybe on a hinge or some kind of pivot just so that we have, you know, flexibility when going around corners and things. But I think that's a pretty good height there. So it's it's. I think quite a good idea. In fact, I've just had a plan for that. Let's just have a go. What does that look like there? Okay, maybe we could have this kind of design and I don't know, like some kind of pivot. I really have no idea right now what I'm going to do with this. Right, there we go. So I've got a pivot there. That might be completely different when we come to doing uh, the trailer and everything. But let's just leave it there um, as an idea and then we know we know to come back to it later. 
Okay, now let's just do a little bit of tidying up here before we carry on because I can reduce some weight and just paint some blocks, you know, because it looks a bit messy at the moment, doesn't it? So let's just go ahead and do this. There we are. I'm probably not going to have red wheels. There we are, that could work. I could even have the front ones red and the rear ones black. That might be quite interesting. Just a bit of difference there. Let's go with that for now. Next, I'm going to actually connect up our engines and put some generators or maybe just one medium generator or something in here. If there's space, I really hope there's space now. Um, and then we are going to take it for another test run and check out the speed uh, and also the battery levels and stuff like that. First of all, let's connect up our engines and see if we can attach one generator or at least one generator somewhere in this build. Now here is probably... Yeah, that's where the cab is. We could change these blocks to, you know, pipe blocks if we need to um, for this. But, oh, it's going to be a bit tricky, isn't it? Will a medium generator fit here, for example? We could. If I just make a little platform here like that. Let's just see if we can fit one in, first of all. We want a generator here now. They're quite expensive, but it's not too bad, actually. Two grand for a medium 12,000 for a large one and I, yeah that's just way too big anyway so we're gonna have to go for a medium I think and I reckon that's good uh, that's also very central oh it fits really well look look at that that fits very nicely actually um, I could even fit two of them I don't know maybe the maybe the fuel line is in the way which we can change to a hose um, let's just see if we can fit two in but I doubt it with this current setup No, it's not going to fit like that, is it? But you know what? Let's have one generator, one medium generator, and that might be enough. It really might be enough, actually. Um, we will have a gearbox. Uh, let's, just, let's just see if we can make a bit more space here. We can always put this stuff back later, but let's just give us some room to work with, right? Um, and because we have two engines, you know, a gearbox is going to be a pretty good idea, I think, for this. That actually fits quite well there, doesn't it? If we just do that. Now, where do we want our arrows to point on the gearbox? Well, if we want uh, more generation and lower RPS, we want to have the arrows pointing towards the engine, don't we, I believe? For example, if the ratio is 3 to 1, then we're going to want to have three revolutions in the generator and then one revolution on the engine, right? So the generator's spinning faster than the engine. And uh, hopefully the engines can cope with it. We can always change the ratios if we need to. Um, but let's grab some pipe work here. There we go. So hopefully that's going to work. It is, yeah, it looks pretty good to me. Let's put it, hmm, now it will require testing to find out which ratio we want and what's best for us. But uh, let's just put it on three to one and then we can change it after that. Now here's our fuel line. So that is actually ready to go. We have got no way of like refueling this truck at the moment, but that is very, very simple to do. So if we change this to a T piece, uh, where's that? I think that's here enclosed at the moment. We might change that. It looks a bit weird in blocks actually. I, I will change that for sure. Then we'll get an angle piece here. And then we'll just put a fluid anchor on, which is a fluid hose anchor right here like that. OK, so now we can actually refuel this truck. We'll make sure that everything that we need has power. So the engines have got power uh, doors. Of course, we're not using at the moment. We might as well give all these power. I don't know. It's not really necessary, but whatever. And then um, we need power going from the generator into the battery as well. So that is done. Look at that. I think we're ready to now hook up some buttons to start these things. So hotkey number one would be to start the engines. I will have a throttle lever actually for our uh, engines. So I'll just stick this inside anywhere for now. It really, for testing, it really doesn't matter. Okay, that's it in there. And I will have symmetry mode back on probably just in case. Let's see if we can start it at, I don't know, 20%. It may not be enough. Uh, with this gear ratio but there are two engines so we'll see we'll change our sensitivity a bit just so it's easier to be really accurate with our numbers and also we will have to just power that throttle so we'll do that right now there we go we're back in data again and now we're going to connect our fuel tanks up let's have 
uh, left and right fuel tanks here on separate dials. Uh, FL and then FR just for now. I think that would be fine, right? Let's put that to zero. I don't know if that's necessary here. There we go. So we've got our fuel dials on. And, you know, we do want to, although we want to generate a lot of power, we also don't want to generate too much power and then be wasteful on the fuel, right? So it will be a bit of a balancing act and I'll do some, you know, proper testing and we'll, we'll find the right numbers. Next, we're going to put our generator into one of these dials as well. So that's the battery one there. Let's put generator next to that. And it would be very handy to have, you know, RPS and temperatures as well. So let's just, if I... Um, take symmetry mode off and we'll use these two over here. You know, again, the dial situation will change. Um, it will look much better. This is only, you know, for testing and initial setup here. So let's label these as RPS and temperature like that and hook them up. Now we do have twin engines, but because they're running on the same system for now, I'll just, you know, measure one. So here's temperature. Here is RPS and they should behave exactly the same. That's the idea anyway. There we go. They're hooked in. All right, then let's spawn it in and see if it works. Right, here we go then. Now I did put the ratio back to one to one actually, so it might rev quite high, <laughs> but I'll turn down the throttle and then I'll increase that ratio if it works. Here we go. Right, it's working. It's working. Okay, now that's 30% getting pretty hot pretty quickly loads of generation there but the rev limiter so down we go down we go now of course don't forget we will change the ratios so don't panic <laughs> um temperature actually is going down right there i was worried about that because of course we're using the ordinary radiators and they're not very good um in general but the lower our rps when we've changed that ratio the cooler these engines will run anyway and it's still going down there um, but we're not generating much power at the moment. So let's just increase that to like 18%. And there's a lot more generation already. Temperatures are going up. RPS. Okay, not bad. Now where's our fuel? Let's just have a look here. That's quite efficient. Actually, you know what? Let's just change our ratios before we have a look at our fuel consumption because it should get much better in a minute. Okay, so down here then on our gearbox, we're going to click the select button, uh, go into our gearbox here, and we're just going to change it to 3 to 1, which is sort of the maximum uh, for this setup at the moment. So we'll do that and then work our way back if we need to. Look at that thing, it's an absolute monster, isn't it? Anyway, let's go in. And it is uh, it's refueled, so we can try and see if it starts again. Full power this time on a 3 to 1 ratio. And it started... Look at the generation, we're getting 300. Wait a minute, temperatures are actually, I'm surprised it's going up, but that's not bad. Now how much fuel are we draining? Goodness me, that's not bad actually, is it? I mean, considering how much power, we don't need to generate that much power. Not anywhere near it, as far as I, I think I know anyway. So we will reduce our RPS quite a bit. Uh, save on fuel. Hang on, let's just go down to say 50% just to see how it is. Uh, okay, 50%. Right, and then we'll start uh, driving around and just see if we uh, can maintain battery. So generation has gone way far down, so we do want to have more throttle to find a really good balance of, uh, you know, sort of fuel efficiency and power generation there. But 6 RPS, just under 6. Temperatures are going down. It's still good generation, but we do want more. But look at the fuel consumption now. That's really good. These tanks are, yeah, less than half full. That one is like a third full. So, uh, yeah, this, uh, this is going to be really good, I think. <laughs> it's going to be really good. Better than I thought. Let's go to 60%, so 10% more throttle. And then we've gone from, I think, what was it, 75 generation to 110. A big jump there. Uh, fuel consumption is still pretty good actually not bad is it not bad right let's put it back down to 50% and now we're gonna drive around yes look at that okay let's drive around and see if we can maintain a hundred percent battery at this much throttle 
And if we can, we can even reduce the uh, the throttle a bit, of course. But let's go full power here. So I'm literally going full power. Two small electric motors. We're getting really good speed out of those. Goodness me, I'm quite surprised. Okay, uphill. 17, nearly 18 meters per second. Look at that, that's really good. Hang on, I'm just going to third person here. Oh my goodness, uh, big jumps. <laughs> right, let's try and find some flat ground and have a look at our top speed if we can. This is so good, I'm quite surprised. Maximum battery, let's have a look at this. Page up. Look at that, we're holding full battery at only half throttle. So, fuel consumption is amazing. We can even oh, so increase uh, efficiency. Um, by reducing that throttle. Still got full battery. I've just held down full throttle the whole way with these motors here. Look at that. Solid 100%. Uh, oh my goodness. Uh, <laughs> any damage? Oh no. We've damaged. Okay, we're going to overheat in a minute. Wait. Right. We might overheat because that radiator's broken. Okay, but I was being a bit silly. <laughs> anyway, I think the wheels are okay. Yeah, look at that. So we've damaged a radiator, and I do need to patch up the front there. Um, that's pretty good. I'm very happy with this. I'm extremely... And we can add more fuel, you know. Um, I think this fuel is going to last plenty of time, but we can always add more. We can add double easily if we need to. Um, what a great start to this vehicle. I'm very happy about that. Temperatures are 45, and they're going to be lower... Um, I was so worried about the temperatures. Look at that. Let's just uh, go around here for a bit, shall we? Test out some uh, manoeuvring in smaller spaces between these containers, for example. Your consumption, again, you can see really, really good there. And it's going to get better next time we test it. Okay, good turning circle. We will, I think, rear wheel steering is going to make a big improvement on that. I can sense a bit of, yeah, a bit of uh, understeer <laughs> at the front. Uh, but it's not bad, is it? I feel like I'm sort of drifting a little bit, maybe. Yeah, yeah, I am. Oh, dear. Right, it's all for a test. Bit of spin. But if we made this four-wheel drive or even six-wheel drive, remember, we can just do that by adding motors onto here, and we might still maintain 100% battery. That is super good. Oh, I'm so happy with this. Right, let's take it back in. Okay, but that's it for this episode, everybody. Thank you so much for watching. I can't wait to carry on building this truck. I mean, next, really, I'm going to put on the final touches. I'm going to try and finish off this truck um, completely. And then, of course, we want to build our trailer as well. And I do have a pretty good idea of our first trailer for transporting these containers, which are around us right now. So we're getting pretty close. And this truck is only going to get better and better. I really hope you've enjoyed it. Thank you so much. Uh, please do subscribe and like the video uh, if you enjoyed it. I really appreciate it. But thank you so much for coming along. And uh, take care. And I hope to see you all very, very soon. Bye, guys.